models of strain compactification to four dimensions gave not one possibility, but many that were at least roughly compatible with what we observed. So as I told you, the anomaly cancellation, the generalized anomaly cancellation found in 1984, rather abruptly made it possible in a strikingly beautiful and elegant way to derive from string theory, in other words, from the unified theory of gravity and the quantum theory, a unified theory of gravity and something that was at least a good rough draft of the world of elementary particles. But the way of doing this wasn't unique. There were many closely related constructions that were possible. I always hoped that this would go away, but later research always had the effect of generating more possibilities. So I was one of the people working on these constructions, and I'm tempted to say that the proliferation of possibilities was the embarrassment of my youth. Meanwhile, developments in astronomy have made some of our most distinguished colleagues suggest that the real world might be based on just such a megaverse of possibilities. So um, one who's discussed this a lot is Martin Rees, the astronomer royal in this country. Um, it would be hopeless to try to explain all the contributions of all the distinguished people who have made them, but certainly Alan Guth um, is one who's explored such possibilities and I think described it in last year's Newton lecture. And his point of view had nothing, well, was not primarily motivated by string theory, was mainly motivated by clues coming from cosmology. The two most relevant developments have been the apparent observation of a tiny but not zero cosmological constant, in other words, the fact that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. That was essentially first observed in around 1998, although it took a couple of years for it to be really convincing, at least to me. And the second is the, the success of Guth's theory of cosmic inflation in describing the fluctuations of the cosmic microwave radiation. The way that when we look at different directions in the sky, we see slightly different temperatures. So the value of the cosmological constant makes the real world look like it actually might be unstable and might be a little bit of an accident. And if the world were described by a, a megaverse of possibilities. Cosmic inflation is a beautiful way of populating all of the megaverse of possibilities, just starting with one, just starting with something simple. So these clues and others have made some of our colleagues uh, suspect that something like the multiplicity of string theory possibilities might be the way the real world is. But if it's true, uh, we need more clues to make it convincing. If the, the idea would be that the landscape of string theory vacua, again, I'm not much of an artist. I've tried to draw a mountain range with many valley, valleys. Uh, the idea would be that the early universe had many places it could have settled into. And different regions of the universe might have settled into different valleys. Uh, the inflationary universe of Alan Guth actually gives a way that just starting with one, you'd end up tunneling through all the others. If the landscape of string vacua is the right concept, it's another big shift in our interpretation of the theory. But to my thinking, we still need more clues to have a better picture of whether that is the right interpretation. At any rate, the process of learning what string theory means has a long way still to go. One of the reasons that it is, I think, an exciting topic for uh, today's students to work on is precisely that so much isn't understood. It's sometimes framed as a criticism that string theorists don't really understand their theory. That's true, but if we understood it, it might be finished. The fact that so little is understood and that such relatively small pieces are actually such big discoveries in their own right is part of what makes it exciting. And there's a lot still more to do. Thank you very much.